Yeah. All right, what up, y'all? Uh, okay, you guys can't understand us for this shit. But um, we're back. I'm here with C minus in a parking lot. Yep. Parking lots, odd fact. Parking lots are with some of my favorite places to smoke. Yeah. <laughs> like for real. Like <laughs> I wrote us one of my first songs that I ever did when I was making music was about getting high in a parking lot. It's kind of a it's a it, it's a place to go. Like if you especially if you know the place. You know what I mean? I mean this is our first time here. I've seen this place. I think we ate here a long time ago, maybe. I here a long time ago. And I drank a pitcher of Michelada, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, a whole pitcher. I was that on that level. But it was Modelo, so it was like shit, you know? <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, this place is called Ga uh, Galagetza, right? Is that mm -hmm. Galagetza? That's how you say it? I don't know. It's um, Oaxacan. Yeah, specifically Oaxacan uh, style food. They're known for their mole. Personally, and I don't want to offend anybody at the restaurant, I don't like mole. I've never liked it. So, you know, really? So yeah. it's like you feel like it's that, like, you know, like if I like if I go in there and I taste it and I'm like, yo, this changed my mind. That's what I'm hoping to come out of here. And, I, and I'm not going to lie. Open this place gets fucking packed. Yeah. It gets packed. They, uh, you know, sometimes you see the line around here because it's a, it's a very uh, mixed. Uh, this area reminds me very much of how I grew up as a kid. Um, I grew I grew up on the street called Kenwood, and before the riots happened and people started, you know, fucking up the liquor stores that the Koreans owned, it used to be a very Latino and Asian kind of culture. And this is exactly what it is because right across the street you got like a little <laughs> Asian plaza, and right here you got a little taste of uh, Oaxacan food. So it reminds me very much of like growing up because you see a lot of like a lot of different. A very big, big mix type of uh, people that come in here, and it's awesome. It's diversity, which means <coughs> this, the food can do that. You know what I mean? I'm looking forward to the mole. I, I'm a mole fan, so. You like mole? Oh was yeah. Your mo uh, was your mom Mexican? Yeah. Okay. I, I never. Fuck, that's weird. I never really asked you. I was like, hey, what was, my, was my I just mom assumed Mexican? It. Yeah. I just assumed it's like, yeah, yeah everybody has. But um. Is that like one of the things that your mom would make? No, that's one of the things my mom wouldn't make. But when I'd go over to my friend's house, my mom didn't know how to make it, so. Um, Whenever I'd go over to other people's house, I'd, I'd try and get it there. Moms get offended when you tell them you try something else at somebody else's house and shit. Yeah. <laughs> and like, oh, you said shit was good. You should try making it. <laughs> my, mom, my mom was like, I don't like that anyway. So, yeah, go ahead and eat it over there. I was like, oh, I'm cool. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, mom. Margarita Fridays are actually uh, this key. Uh, my friend who's coming through has, works for this company. And we, this is a key ingredient to our Margarita Fridays because at Be Real TV, Be Real, yes, Be Real, not anybody else, Be Real started this tradition <laughs> about fucking making Cadillac margaritas, which consist of three fucking, uh, of three fucking uh, liquors, including this one right here. I mean, he uses the lighter stuff because there's three different colors. This looks like rose, but illegal mezcal. Yes, this is literally, I, th I like to tell people that mezcal is like, um, the smoked whiskey of like Mexicans, you know what I mean? Cause it's always very smoky and uh, it's one of my favorites, you know what I mean? In regards to uh, get him making, making that shit hit and you know, fucking being smooth. I know you don't drink, so this is all me. <laughs> all you big dog. But yeah, I'm excited about this and uh, we're gonna go ahead and see what's been going on. Cause the last time we tried it, which is a beast taqueria, we only tried one kind. How old is this part? It's, you can get the year. What is it, like 70? I don't know, but these cars are pretty old. Like, G Gabriel Iglesias would probably flip out because he has a collection of these. So it would be, you know what I'm saying, yeah. fluffy. It's the only time I've seen one of those in person, not what they look like inside. And it is a piece of fucking history. Yeah, I can imagine is. fucking, this is like driving a bus, dude. And what, you know, what, what else could we do but fucking... You know, Chris and we're two for two right now where we've been able, no, three for three, where we've been able to link up with the owner. So, so my spot dude? over here, man. What's up, man? How you doing? <laughs> out here. Look, I tell you, it's a thing, bro. We're hey, man. Connected. We're vibing out here. We're vibing out here. This is right here. Would you get, is your Oaxaca your hat right there? You know what? I don't, this is I just. I think this is a Oaxaca hat. Hold on. I don't know. How do you know if it's a Oaxacan hat? You got some, uh, from the homie Gilbert. Oh, okay. Then yeah, it is. <laughs> uh, the, what, I mean, let me t let me uh, tell you guys. So we're here at Galagetza, and I'm not. We never really had any uh, Oaxacan food over here. Can you let us know the deal behind this place because like yeah, it's, man. it gets packed, bro. There's a lot of people that show up here. So we're here at Galagetza uh, in Koreatown, and I mean we sit like 300 people, but like you said, fortunately we've been fortunate, we've been blessed. It gets packed, and the thing about it is we're just authentic, man. It's just like. When I tell people, like, people come here, they're like, oh, let me get, like, three tacos or burrito. I'm like, no, we have none of that. This is like you're eating at my grandma's house. 
This is like so there's my, no this is like there's no kitchen. tacos, no burritos. Nah, man. We have tacos, but they're not what we think. Not your reg, not your regular spot. This Ooh, right there lets you know there is like my grandma's kitchen. So this is welcome to our family's kitchen. There's no place that doesn't get packed. You know what I mean? Even pre or like after or during COVID. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah uh, this whole thing is wild. But now, you know, during COVID, we closed down the inside, and now we have this outside space. Which is where we'll be dining. Today. Yeah, we'll be dining outside, and we're out here. We got the picnic tables. We got the Michimobile. It's a yeah, 69 this, BW is, bus. Is this what this is? The Michimobile? This is the Michimobile, man. A 69 BW 69 bus. 69 BW bus. We got a DJ booth. We got the TV speakers and four beer taps outside. Yeah, so we pull up, four yeah. micheladas. You know, this is the most interesting version of horchata I've ever seen. Because usually everybody has their own take, and I, I thought... They were taking it to the next level when I saw the banana one and the strawberry one. Yeah. And then everybody got it. You know, when you see it at the mall, it's like everybody got the recipe. You know what I'm saying? But like this is like, this has cashews. No, what is it? What do you call this? They're walnuts. Walnuts. And you have a uh, melon, melon, cantaloupe. Cantaloupe. Yeah. And it's, I've never seen it done like this. So yeah, I imagine you have I'm to stir it like next week. You know what I mean? Let's see. Let's check. Um, I almost want to just take a sip of it because I feel like you have to like eat the walnuts and shit, but... Yeah, you kind of have to. You don't have to. Yeah, um, or not. No, I want to taste it first. Fucking cheers. <laughs> oh hell yeah. 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 Dude, yeah. Uh, yeah. You can like substitute a meal with this horchata right here, bro. This shit's like fulfilling right here. Man, this is probably some of the best horchata I've had in a very long time. I what I thought the, I can't even taste it. I want. I, I thought the cantaloupe was gonna overpower. Like I was thinking the same thing. I was gonna thought it was gonna be like more of like a melon thing, but it turns out to be just a really nice accent to it. And then I have you know there's some uh, some smashed walnuts in there or chopped walnuts, and that's beautiful texture. I feel like I gotta. Yeah, let's try this out with the cantaloupe. Let's see what it does. That like. Yep. That adds like the the is what like the canela would add to mm -hmm. to like the salt right, right away. Right. You know how they have like um cinnamon? This gives it more of like that um not smoked, but like um it substitutes what the what the what the um with the cinnamon would do. With the too. cinnamon, yeah, absolutely. And it gave me that exact like uh sense of flavor. I never thought about this, but I'm gonna ask my I'm you know I'm gonna ask my family be like, hey, try throwing some fucking cashews. No, what is it? Uh walnuts on top walnuts, of Walnuts, yeah. Yeah, this is this is fire, man. I, yeah. I feel like I can't have a lot of these right now because it's a it Alchata already is a very fulfilling drink, so you gotta sip slow. But on a hot day like this, this hits the spot right here. Woo. We're here, the, the the whole crew is here, and uh, you know, Gilbert fucking joined us from Ilegal Mezcal, you know what I mean? And uh Number one, he brought some worms along, and I'm, I don't know what, you know what I mean? I'm not, I'm not looking forward to that part, but we're going to leave that maybe after the food. But the one thing I wanted to point out is that we got, like, quite a big feast right here. Yeah, man, this, this is the entrees right here. I've never seen a tamal like this. Like, why is, is, is it, is that mole on top? So it's actually, it's mole, but it's wrapped in a banana leaf. Oaxacan food is just, you know, it's, it, we're our own cuisine, right? So yeah. this is actually a tamal. Right now it's upside down, so you turn it upside down, you open it, or right now it's kind of, there's a hole uh, looking through it. It's a whole process uh, with opening the tamal, right? Yeah. So you got tamal, you got clayuda. Clayuda is a staple street food. So if we're out, that looks like a pizza. Bro. If we were actually in Oaxaca and we're drinking like Agua Gilbert, yeah. like and it's late at night, we'd be stopping and getting either clayudas or probably like tacos de lechon. Like For sure. those would be our two stops right there. Yeah, yeah. Tacos de lechon. Oaxaca is not a taco city, but they have the best tacos in the world. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> pork tacos, right? Pork tacos. Yes. Oh man, they're. they're... Is, now this is. So like... this is tasajo. Tasajo is beef. We got chorizo. Uh, we got cecina, which is pork. So these are three meats, and we, we all we break them down in house. We don't buy we don't buy it like this. We buy the the, the you know the meat, and then we break it down, and it's all handmade. And that's kind of the difference between us and a lot of people, though. and how you can get an authentic you know flavor that you have to make everything in house and from scratch. Yeah. The, the tortilla we actually import from Oaxaca. Chile rellenos. We import the chiles themselves. So it's not like all the way from Oaxaca. All the way from Oaxaca. All right, so check it out. So you can do like this. Or you Flip it over. That's like literally a big ass fucking tamal. I've never it's seen a big ass tamal. Look. And if you notice it, it's it's got a, a different husk. It's a banana leaf, right? Banana it's leaf. not corn husk. And that's gonna keep a lot of moisture inside of the tamal. 
That's, um, that's what, you know, because I'm Salvadorian and they, we're used to using the banana leaf. And I personally am not too fond of the, of the banana leaf. My, my, my mom's always like, say, why do you prefer Mexican tamales over with the Salvadorian ones? I was like, because I don't like the masa texture. She, she's going to see this, Dude, this and she's going she's gonna to be like, she's gonna just give me the, the salty. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you guys are Salvadorian? Oh, yeah. What, the, what department are you guys from? Uh, what's up, huh? Hell yeah. I know the lingo. Oh, okay. The departamento. <laughs> Great. Does this have frijoles? No, nah, it's actually mullets, black mullets. Okay. <laughs> I was like, is, I was like, is this frijoles? What is it? It looks like requeso inside. So you got a queso fresco. You got a queso fresco. You got a cheese one and he's got the chicken one. And the chicken one's uh, it's called uh, picadillo. So it's like a blend of chicken and a lot of other ingredients. I'm going to put a little salsa oh, yeah. on there. You know what I mean? Everything's homemade. So I wanted to add a little, mm. little taste over here. Uh, top it off. Cheers. Mmm. That's on point, man. Yeah. Not stingy with the cheese. The right kind of fucking peppers. The salsa is not even like, oh my God. Like people, because people get scared with salsa. They think, you know, any kind of Latino restaurant you go, they think it's like so spicy. Chiles, you know, are off the hook, man. Yeah, Oaxacan food's not about the spice. It's about the flavor. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's like, it's spicy, but my dad was, was he would always, he would always uh, be like, oh, try it. Try this. He'd be like, pica rico or pica lo pendejo? You know, like, <laughs> is it good or yeah. is it just stupid spicy? What did you, what did you think of your, see? It's delicious. Sorry, still eating. When I took a break from from eating meat, um, I would have tlayudas, but uh, with just just the the beans. But I didn't know that it's not just regular beans, right? What's uh, the asiento? Well, as so under the clayuda, it's a the, the way you make it is you get the clayuda, and you put asiento, which is like pork lard, but it's our own homemade pork lard. So asiento, and then the beans, and then the cheese, cabbage. And right now we're using quesillo, and then you have the three meats. And their beans are also seasoned differently, right? Mm -hmm. Aren't the beans with avocado leaf, or is it something else? Avocado leaf, yeah. Avocado leaf. They're, they're, se they're seasoned with avocado leaf? Yeah. What a great start to the, to the day right here. This it's is the morning, yeah. so. And uh, all three of them. One thing, uh, it's okay. <laughs> See, might as well drink it. And uh, <laughs> now I'm interested in trying the tamal right here real quick, because this is the biggest tamal I've seen. And uh, the mole. So you can try the mole, so you can see what the mo our mole tastes like. Here's the moment of truth. Oh, man, I'm nervous now. The, oh, mole, the, the mole, mole of truth. Of truth. <laughs> here's, the, here's the mole of truth. <laughs> you don't have to say you like it just because I'm here, man. As long as you try it. I tell people, you don't have to like it. You just have to try it. Like bro, it. that is not what I thought it was going to taste like, bro. Yeah, right? I thought it was going to taste very chocolatey and overwhelming, and a lot of people really do it like that. And That's a misconception. That, it kind of tastes like... um. Like with a hint of like what barbecue would taste like, you know what I mean? The, I don't know, yeah, like yeah, the smoky. Has, yeah, the smoky. It has that taste, and I've never had that in a tamal. And uh, number one, like I still stand by the texture part, but the fucking <laughs> yeah, but this changed my whole mind on how mole it fucking tastes. Good, yeah. yeah. Like I, I, I wouldn't. I'm not gonna look at it now and be like, oh, that should taste like fucking diluted chocolate or like fucking too much chocolate. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm willing to go ahead and try it from you know because this, this definitely gave it a whole different twist. Like I'm gonna be like. I'm fucking have to find out like what made it taste so different and like go tell my mom. Like, be like hey, sabes que? Less chocolate. One of the best parts about Oaxaca for me is one of the most diverse states in How Mexico. How deep into Mexico is it? Like middle southern. It's the second southernmost state. So it's Oaxaca, Chiapas, and Guatemala. So you're looking at microclimates, uh, different dialects. Uh, there's seven types of mole in, in Oaxaca, or mm -hmm. there's a lot, right? There's a bunch. So uh, so a bunch Damn. of dialects. It, it's it's uh, it's seven? not just more. It's not just chocolatey. You know, yeah. it's not just right. sweet. It's and even the whole chocolate, that's a misconception because chocolate is an ingredient. So then it became famous as, it became famously known as the chocolate mole, mm. right? But then, so then people who don't know how to make it, they would take that and think it should taste like chocolate. Yeah. I've had but really, it should, it should be a balanced flavor. It's almost like mole is like the curry of like for Spanish exactly. people, you know what I mean? When <laughs> people don't know what a mole is, that's, that's the way I explain it. It's, it's somewhat like a curry in that it's a sauce and it's complex. But it's not in flavor. What are you in spirit? What are you, what are you working on? See, I was like, I haven't heard shit from you, dog. <laughs> like, I was like, this <laughs> All of it. <laughs> Just been working on all of it. What's Everything. been your favorite thing so far? I gotta say, the mole is up there. <laughs> That's what's up. With the chili relleno, man. That's yeah. really, the chicken really, really. Is, is, oh, it's so good. Yeah. This is really good. It's got, it got like a little bit of raisins and nuts in there. What? Did you try, did you, did you feel that? Yeah. No, nah, I didn't the feel raisins? it. The it's all just really seized, like it just it all comes together. It all comes yeah. together like as its own thing. It's like I can't pinpoint one thing, but it's delicious. Good food should taste good cooking in general, right? When you make a dish, it should come and become a thing onto it of its own. 
It does evolve. If you taste like any one, if you taste any one thing that means that flavor is a little overwhelming or anything, it should be balanced. And balance is really what we try to achieve. Yeah. This is my. This is my. I can fuck that whole thing up, bro. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, you eat very much like a Oaxacan, where you get something and you add your little toppings yep. and. I mean, that's why I tell people about the way we eat at home, you know? But this get is... tortilla, and everybody makes their own little hand taco. Everybody makes their own bite. This is what the experience... This is what, like, an experience at a restaurant like this should be like, yeah. though. Where it's like, if you're if a place is going to stand by uh, authenticity or use that term in their food, um, you you really have to be able to back that up. And it doesn't get any more authentic than this right here um, in regards to the Oaxacan menu and the cuisine. Because it's... I mean, fuck, everything is like a home run. You know what I mean? It's, and you have an experience here with, we're, all four of us are dining here, and it's like, I, there's other places where I'm like, I don't want to eat with my hands because I don't really know them like that. I don't want to fucking have people in the kitchen. But it's like, I'm so comfortable here that it's like, I'm like eating like if I were eating with my grandma. My grandma's like 94, and she's like, you know, what's the with las manos? Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, you, you use the tortillas. The tortillas, yeah, just grab. And this is what that, 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 that is. That this experience and this cuisine brings, like you can't look at a platter like that and be like, "Let me get a cuchillo, this and that." No, you get this shit, roll it up. You get it's like pizza. It's like pizza. Yeah, you get you you get your hands in there, and everything here is a home run. Yeah. It's crazy that you guys um, the horchata has um, walnuts. walnuts. That has raisins. I was a kid who would, like pick out the raisins and stuff, mm-hmm. but then once you try it in certain things, it just works. It does. You guys use these. Where like other places would use that, like for canela, like in the chata, I feel that the walnuts mm-hmm. uh, um, are substituting the canela, ah. they, and they provide the same complement that they mm-hmm. would do it as, as canela would have it on the chata. I never thought about integrating uh, the the dried nuts into uh, into like that cuisine. Now mm-hmm. it's like I eat me thinking I was like, yeah, I wonder what this would taste like. I was like, next time I make a quesadilla, I'm gonna fuck around and put some, you know? Yeah, for real. And, and my grandma's always been one of those people that she's a. Uh, She's she's always like mixing sweet and savory. Yeah. So like, she like when I was a kid, she fuck around and make something crazy. Like she made me a quesadilla with pieces of manzana inside. Like you know, fucking <laughs> apple. And I'm just like, what the fuck is this? And I'm like, oh, you know, it's not that bad. <laughs> like and looking at it now, I was like, was my grandma high? <laughs> like, yeah. like I don't know, but your oregano in your closet is really good. <laughs> so we actually make our own michelada mix. It's called uh, I love micheladas. Oh shit! And right now we're having a Sorry, we're having a mango michelada right here for breakfast. That tastes like, you know those pelicos? <laughs> yeah, tamarindo. Yeah, the tamarindo, tamarindo one. Tamarindo, yeah. With, um, in a beer form. And yeah. it's not, it's not, um, uh, I never understood when somebody's like, let me make you a michelada and they dump half the bottle of chile in there. I don't understand it either. I fucking, I'm like, yo, dude, what do you want? Give me Harper and I'm yeah, fucking dirty, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> like, don't be, I don't need that much tapatio, bro. It's gonna come out. He's like, a, Z- I, I, a Zantac? Yeah. <laughs> I don't like when, I, when I'm like, hey, let me get a Michelada, and they give you like a glass of Clamato juice and then pour like a little little drop of a beer in there, you know? Like it should taste like, again, going back to the same thing, it should taste like a, a thing onto it of itself. It should be its own experience. The mango flavor is from the beer. We Right now we're using mango beer, but it's lime based and then we a little bit of tomato juice and then sauces and spices. It's our own recipe. Damn. There's a lot of different interpretations of, of a michelada. Uh, there's people that just put lime juice, just salt. Yeah. Um, but this definitely is my favorite uh, version of a michelada, honestly. Um, the mix that they make is great. You just put two ounces and then you just fill it up with your beer. So it's not a lot of work. It's easy. You don't have to go to the store and buy clamato, tapatio, valentina, Worcestershire sauce, all of that stuff. It's it's just one stop. You just pour it in there and it's great. And, uh, and it's not thick like some uh, micheladas can be too. Yeah, man, if you guys want an actual experience of, like, some home cooking, especially, like, something different than your... Tr- like, if you go to Toritos, the, you know what I'm saying? Like, come on, man, that's not an actual fucking experience right there, like a Mexican uh, dining experience. But you want to go ahead and get into something that's really, like, going to switch your shit around, come through out get some, man. This mm-hmm. is, like, you're, 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 you got to travel. You're traveling to Mexico without getting on a plane and catching COVID. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> for real, for real. It's some, fucking... And you're outdoors. Yeah, yeah fucking good. delicious, man. Some of the best food. Let's I've see what check passports here at entrance. <laughs> check passports. Check what was um check IT numbers. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, know, um, I heard there's dessert on the way. Yeah. Looks like it's just me uh going on this adventure. Because uh <laughs> well, I mean it's you dessert. guys yeah. dessert. This is not what I had in mind for dessert, but um I started high and hungry, you know, with the intention of trying different things. This wouldn't be my first time trying uh chapulines. I never had them like this. C-minus said, fuck that. I'm scared. 
I'm not. If I see my lizard eat these before, I can't too. <laughs> so, so high and hungry first, y'all. Oh, this is ajo in there. Yeah, yeah. Some people like it. Cheers. I mean, number one, it's a very good mixture of salt mm -hmm. and limon. It tastes no different than um. You know the fucking, um, the nuts, the little winos that kick it off like carnicerias eat? <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? The ones that just, like, you're like, where do you get money? <laughs> <laughs> but they're fucking drinking and their nose is all red. <laughs> Why do you look at me? <laughs> <laughs> it tastes like those bar nuts, bro. Stay slippery. Stay slippery. It's not bad. Mm. It's not bad. It's not bad. <laughs> I think they're actually good. Like there, it's like legitimately good. I'm taking some of these. These are, give me a to-go box on these. Yeah, I think they're great. Call it what you want, eating bugs. It's crunchy, it's lime, it's garlic, it's chile. You guys should make a salad with these as croutons. Oh, I'm down. That's a good idea. What better way to, um, you know, fucking end the meal this morning than the Oaxaca anyway, you know what I mean? I mean, this is Ilegal Mezcal. Mezcal is uh, from that region. If yeah, you know, it's the Oaxaca. Oaxacan region. And what kind of mezcal is it? So this is uh, Mezcal Añejo. It's uh, aged in whis whiskey barrels for just over a year. A and you're right. What better way to end a meal like this? This is communal style, family style food. And mezcal is the ultimate communal spirit. Yeah. It's the best spirit to kind of loosen you up for a conversation. And, uh, but I think we'll end the conversation. Salud. Salud. <laughs> Salud, guys. Salud. I'd rather drink. Well, if you're going to shoot it, I'll shoot it too. Oh, damn it. Oh, wait, are we supposed to zip it? Hey, listen, you can do whatever you want. Yeah. That's the thing is that let's not be dogmatic about it. You know, whatever, however you want to drink it is fine. It really tastes like firewood. Like it has smoky, uh, that yeah. smoky aftertaste. I mm -hmm. like that. It's well, yeah, the difference between tequila and mezcal, in my point of view, mm -hmm. I don't want to put any words anywhere. But I feel like in mezcal, you, you taste the process of making yeah. it. Yeah. Whereas tequila, you're tasting the plant. Like that refined whiskey type shit? Yeah, I mean, you're, and you're tasting every process, you know? Like, it's burned under, it's, it's cooked underground, it's processed, it's fermented outside. You take all these steps that are very close to earth, and you taste that throughout every step. So when, when you try it, you're trying the earth, and you're trying being in Oaxaca. It's Mexican. Uh, the grandfather of tequila, honestly. I had the lemon, like, I was going to have to chase it. I didn't know what to expect, because it's dark, you know? Mm. <laughs> so it was good. But no, nah, it, it went down very smooth, and that's... Uh, and it's a good just never, never fails to, dis you know, never fails to... Uh, you know, to make it happen. I mean, we use this at work. We got three different bottles for Cadillac margaritas. Be real, mix it with Miss Scott. Oh, yeah. So um, it does the job. <laughs> yeah. Salute, guys. Man. Cheers. All right, so tell me why do we have to eat this worm? I mean, we don't have to. No, I'm just saying, I was like, I want it's tradition. About it. <laughs> well, you know, when, when you're in Oaxaca, there's a lot of things that are just traditional. There's certain towns that, that this has been a custom. So it's not everywhere in Oaxaca, right? But if you go to certain places, they do eat the worm. So we, we have them. So I just want you to try them. It's okay for him to me up. <laughs> <laughs> and there are some there are some brands that do have the worm inside the bottle. It, it does it changes the flavor, but yeah. uh, honestly for me, it's got a slight bitterness to to it, and just any bitter flavor always for me goes really well with mezcal, grapefruit, that type of stuff. So this is just another version of that. Salud. 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 You eat the worm first, right? Whatever you want, man. No rules. I like that little taste. A little leathery. I like it. Yeah, it's not too bad. And that's how you do it. I want to thank you, number one, for having us here. I want to thank you guys for coming. This is, a, it's, it's, it, we get to highlight such a fucking gem in LA. I mean, thank you, Nancy, for setting this up and Gilbert yeah. for, uh, you know, coming along and helping set this up as well. And I mean, you know, this is like, this is the dessert, man. <laughs> I was like, this is the dessert with, the, we're over here on some, um, who's the guy who got stung by a stingray? Uh, Steve, <laughs> Steve Irwin. Yeah, we're on some Steve Irwin shit, but like, you know, with bugs and shit. Right? <laughs> we're, on, like, <laughs> we're on safari. Yeah, or, the, or that show where that guy eats all this crazy shit. I was like, we're, we're starting to fucking dabble in that right there. And uh, this has been a crazy episode from the fucking, the different types of uh, styles of Oaxacan food, the chile rellenos, the different kinds of meat, the breakfast, the breakfast pizza, and uh, the tamal, which, and the mole, which I am now a fan of. Good. You know what I mean? You guys changed my mind on this, and I'm happy I was going. I came in here with those expectations. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in, all the high and hungries and, and high fidelity on Be Real TV YouTube. Follow me, C-Fan4, on all the social medias, Twitch, Mixcloud, all that stuff. And uh, see you at the next one. We're here in the heart of Koreatown, Olympic in Normandy. It's 3014 West Olympic Boulevard. You can check out our website, 
ilovemole.com. Everything here has been superb. I, I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as we did, and I hope you guys come. Come over here. Come support. Keep this jam over here alive for future generations to enjoy and keep getting high and hungry and coming over here to uh, eat it. Be on that high and hungry mode, but come in here for more than just a meal and experience, you know? I told you guys I've been working on some giveaways, but I want to make it fair for everybody. So in the in the description at the bottom, there is a link where you can enter and it gives you the rules to the giveaway. Not only are you going to get a care package from High and Hungry and the team, but the restaurant itself, Galagetta, has given us some stuff of their signature michelada mix and some of their signature mole mix. So you guys can go ahead and have this experience. If you're not from California, how much more awesome does that get? All you got to do is go to the description, click the link in the bio, follow the rules. Yes, you got to read. I know you guys don't like that shit. Believe me. You guys can't read Instagram captions. I know because you guys ask me the stupidest questions sometimes. But fuck it, you're going to have to read. It's the only thing I ask you guys uh, for you guys to get hooked up or have a good chance. So make sure you guys click that link in the bio and sign up and good luck to y'all.